Welcome to today's weekly crypto mastery class where we make crypto easy to partner and profit. All right. So we're going to go over the news, overall market, some hot movers in the basket, crypto screener review, indicators, and most importantly, question and answer. This article I thought was pretty interesting. The U.S. wants to promote responsible innovation, Deputy Treasury Secretary says, by Nikki on Coindesk.com. Consensus, fireside chats with Deputy Treasury Secretary Adi Wall, ADMO. You also mentioned, so this was a fireside chat at the 2022 consensus. And they said, you also mentioned the unhosted wallet rule earlier, which I know was kind of put on the back burner in the beginning of 2021. Is that something you're seeing as a rule that the U.S. will actually look to implement? Or is that just more kind of like a framework that you're looking at for potential future rulemaking? And this is what he replied. I'm not going to get ahead of our rulemaking process, but I do think that one of the things that we've focused on is how do we address the challenges that unhosted wallets create for national security and for illicit finance. We understand and respect the need for and the desire to have privacy, but we need to make sure that we're also in a place where we're not creating avenues where those who want to move funds illicitly are able to use digital assets more than traditional assets. We know that criminals and those who are looking to move funds illicitly don't only use digital assets, they use traditional assets as well. The thing we don't want to do is create an advantage for them to move into the digital space. That's not to your advantage and it's not to our advantage. That's why we think that thinking about the travel rule and the unhosted wallet rule makes sense but we want to do it in a way that addresses the fact that the thing we know that the way we solve these challenges, the way we address them is about innovation and making sure that we give you the room to innovate within a regulatory architecture that allows us to protect our national security, consumers, investors, and financial stability. I thought that conversation was pretty unique and interesting and thought I'd bring that to your attention. Now, the next news is Maker Governance is voting to invest $500 million in U.S. Treasury bills by Asoto. And this says that Maker is getting ready to create a new asset vault that will hold its own investment in U.S. bonds. The vote will determine how Maker will deploy its $500 million of treasury assets into low-risk liquid bond strategies. Maker DAO, the issuer, the issuer of the DAI, DAI stablecoin, is currently voting on how to allocate $500 million DAI, which is $500 million, of treasury funds into the U into the investments in U.S. Treasury bills and bonds. The protocol announced on Monday. The government's voted Vote is the result of the community agreeing to an asset allocation for a liquid bond strategy in execution. Maker says this asset allocation introduces a new real world asset vault. Maker vaults allow owners to deposit collateral to generate the DAI stablecoin. The reason this is happening is because Maker's current treasury is largely held in stablecoins that generate little to no yield. By investing excess funds elsewhere, the hope is to reduce counterparty and credit risk. This new vault will hold makers' investment in liquid bond strategies. As part of the previous agreement, the community chose U.S. short-term treasuries and investment grade, IG, corporate bonds as the preferred asset allocation options. And lastly, we have market downturn hasn't chilled optimism about crypto jobs by Jean He Kim on Coindesk.com. So a Coindesk survey finds the majority of employees in the industry feel secure in their positions. Given the cascade of dreadful industry and market news during the following three weeks post Bitcoin going down until the survey ended on Monday, the questions regarding job security, organizational growth, and job 
features provided some interesting insights into workers' outlook. Overall, respondents reported their companies were holding steady or growing and most felt secure in their jobs. The 170 survey respondents represented a broad cross-section of workers. The majority, or 60%, were between the ages of 22 and 40, with just three under 21 and only 11 who were 61 or older. About one third worked in organizations with fewer than 50 employees and another third for organizations between 50 to 999 employees. Three quarters or 76% worked for private rather than public organizations. Against the backdrop of the price of Bitcoin dropping from 30,000 on June 9th to 20,000 by Monday afternoon, the responses about how workers were paid may indicate that crypto workers can tolerate price volatility even in their pay. Nearly a quarter of respondents, or 23%, had the choice of being paid at least partly in crypto, and 67% were paid in fiat only, such as US dollars. When asked whether they were satisfied with their pay options, the ones who have a choice were nearly unanimously satisfied. Only 10 respondents are paid in crypto only, and just two of those people were dissatisfied. So crypto seems to still be having a very strong fan club. Overall market on Bitcoin and Ethereum market cap. So let's look and see what's going on in the overall of crypto land. So the market cap currently is at $942 billion. I made a little note on this chart to show you that on the 23rd, the market cap was close to $875 billion. And then you could see um, on, on, sorry, that's June 23rd and on June 26th, it looks like it almost went up to like a little bit over 975 billion. So it's about a hundred billion dollar movement in three days. Needless to say, since then it has continued to bounce in between 925 billion up to 950 billion. Thus we are at 942 billion today. And now let's look at Coin360 for my visual learners. I love this site. It's coin360.com. There's also a heat map that we can review a little bit later live on TradingView 2. This one is so fabulous because it comes with three shades of green and three shades of red. So you'll see a star I put next to AVAX and Doge and Matic. And that's because that is a dark green. So I just wanted to draw your attention to the dark green boxes today. That means the price went up three steps. So AVAX it looks like it went up 17%, Doge 16%, and Matic, if I can see, it says 39% for Matic. Now, I want to take notice that this is in market cap dominance block size. So even though Matic went up so much, you would think, oh, Matic would have a huge box. Well, not necessarily because the market cap of Matic is not as large as the market cap, meaning what amount is completely invested in Matic is less than the total amount invested in Doge and AVAX. And as you can see here, the most money at this point is being invested in Bitcoin still below the BTC. You can see the, the fine print, it says dominance and then 41%. That means 40% of all the money invested in crypto land is allocated to a Bitcoin at this time. And then the second runner up for most allocated funds is for Ethereum, as you can see with the second largest uh, block on this heat map. And then it looks like you have the stable coin USDC, Tether USDT, and then you can see uh, BUSD is a larger box too. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Here is where you can come to upgrade or resubscribe to your indicators, mastery.cryptobrigade.com, and you'll find the link in the comments below. So let's check out Bitcoin today. So this is the Bitcoin one week performance chart with the radar indicator. So the radar, you can change four charts into one because you're able to see on the lower right hand corner, you can see four different time frames at the same time. 
So the 24 star means four hours, the one D stands for one day, the one W stands for one week, and the one M stands for one month. So right now we can see for Bitcoin currently, at the time of taking this a little bit ago at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Bitcoin for a one hour average was moving up, for the one day average was moving down, for the one week average was moving up, and for the one month it was going down. And take note, you can also click on the radar on the upper left-hand area, and you can customize your time frames there. So here is Bitcoin USD with a one-week chart with the crypto mastery indicators applied. So at this point, you have the early reversal came in on the top set of indicators. It's still, uh, it has not reversed as far as moving upward. And then you have the trend line is still red meaning like, and this is a one week chart too. So on a one week average, it's still in the downward movement. And the TSI stands for trend strength index that is still with the red arrows going down. If the signal line it is still in the downward area. And my favorite indicator, the volatility index, which I always say you make money when you buy it, not when you sell it. It is in a very beautiful place. I'm very excited to see where this is at. And I'm just still waiting for this drop to stop so that I can scoop it before it goes up too fast to get. So it is currently that volatility index is at on a one week average is at 6.25. And I made certain to put a little star and an arrow and I wrote super low because I want you guys to see that that's not a normal number to see on Bitcoin on a one week chart. If you look at the past on this chart on the very left hand side lower, you can see April was the last time it like even skimmed the top of that volatility index of oversold and it never dipped down deep close to that very bottom thin red line which would be zero. So uh, in my opinion, and that's all it is and I'm not a financial advisor, so none of this is financial advice from myself or anyone else on this, this show is that uh, it is exciting time right now and it's just a matter of you know, when to get in. So now on a second note, we have Ethereum, which is following in the footsteps of the king of the Bitcoin. So here we have same thing, the radars on this chart right now. So it takes the four charts, turns it into one. Same as Bitcoin. It's got on the four hour average, it's going up the one day down, the one week up and the one month down. You can see it currently at this time, it was at $1,191. And here is Ethereum with the Crypto Mastery Indicator Bundle. And then you, just like Bitcoin, you have the early reversal going down. You've got the trend line still going down. And you've got the trend strength index indicator still down. And notice it's very, very in the oversold too. The signal line is still going down. And the volatility index, it went down and it looks like it's going up a little. And it's at 7.3. So at this point, Bitcoin is at a better volatility rate than Ethereum is, and uh, but they're still super low. And with this particular chart, it goes back to November 2021. And I, and I want to put your eyes on the very bottom indicator on that volatility index. Notice that it has not dipped down into this red area in a substantial amount of time. All right. So not even when you shrink the screen to November 2021, did it go down? that low into volatility. So this is a key opportunity time. It's just, you don't wanna buy a falling, like grab a falling knife, right? So you've gotta wait and let these indicators tell you when the fall, the, the fall has stopped and when the upward swing is starting. So it's, it's almost like at this point in time, it's all hands on deck. You gotta just be very watchy right now and watch that market set some alerts so when the switch moves to the opposite direction meaning upward that you're ready and you're able and you understand these indicators to know them to follow them so that you can be on the winning side so here is the basket we have and this is not the only coins we watch it's just some of the good programs that are out there or i wouldn't say programs maybe some uh, fundamentals that are good about these particular projects. 
Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So some hot movers in the basket. So I used my watch list and I did some analysis. And at this point, at the moment, these are the percentages that are moving up for the moment. So you have R&D went up 24%. Dream 2.7, 2.71%, DERO up one, Cake up one, Mirror up 0.6, Link 0.8, FTM 0.51. So these are small, um, small movements upward, but it'd be about once we get into the charts, we can zone in on these and see if they have hit a floor and they're just beginning to move upward, or if this is just a side word, a side. A side movement in their pricing. So the watch list coins up for the moment are to the left, but you can organize your watch list by percentage change, the amount of change in the price, the last price, the symbol name. You can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what is ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell. And these coins are up for the day, but I always look for the coins on the floor to be ready for my next low buy. So here's the crypto screen review. And today is, is exactly what you see right now. This is the coins that are on our watch list inside a trading view. And I coded them all as pink. And so therefore you have all the pink ones on the left hand side. And this one was organized by percentage changed. And I went with the direction as to what is high right now. So I thought, well, let's look at some positives and we'll see what is moving upward right now. So Hive went up 39.71%. This is also, take note, a one-week performance chart and that this is, util it's showing you the coins um, from our watch list that I coded pink and they're all on different exchanges. So it's not just exchange based that you're looking at. I wanted to let you know, RNDR went up 23%. Tezos, XTZ went up 10%, Ripple went up 9%, Steam 5%, ACH 4%, OMG 3%, Cake 1%, and the other ones are pretty small percentages. So I wanted to make sure that you guys know how to do that. You can sort by your exchange name also. So on your crypto screen, you can go to filters, and where it says exchange, there's a drop down arrow, and you can choose what exchange you're using currently. And I earlier said that I had changed my coin list, my watch list to pink, just so I could pull them over for that one screenshot for you guys. So in this example, I color coded everything orange in my watch list, and then I had switched it to moving average rating. And this particular one is still on a one week. But if you look at that upper area middle, you can see my arrow looking at the one W. If you click on that area, you have a drop down box and you can filter or change the the number analysis from a one week basis to different time frames. And I wanted to make sure you guys know what these acronyms mean on this site. So you can sort by moving average rating and then last price or by simple moving average for 20 days. 50 days and 200 days. And that's what the SMA 20, SMA 50, and SMA 200 mean. And that little arrow with the S or the downward or the arrow up with the B upward, that means to sell or to buy. Again, this is not financial advice. It's not what I use to make a trade, but it's just one of the strategies I use to, to see what is out there and find things, and then I'll go deep dive into the charts to make a good choice. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the indicators. Again, if you still haven't renewed or if you need to get them or interested in checking them out, you can go to mastery.cryptobrigade.com. So let's look at the indicators. So we have the volatility index for oversold conditions, early reversal indicator, dynamic ATR, trend indicator, trend strength indicator, radar screener, and signal line. So the radar 1.0, it's used to organize your watch list. It confirms trade progression. It shows four different chart times. 
it can be applied to multiple indicators and it allows you to see four plus time frame trend directions on one chart. So here's the radar 1.0. You can see that this particular example, we have 60 minutes, four hours, one day, and one week. And on the left-hand side, when you click on radar, that little spoke pops up and that's where you can customize your time frames. So when you click on that spoke, this is what you see. It says time frame one, time frame two, three, and four, and those drop downs will give you multiple time frames to choose from. And this is great for those intraday traders, or if you go into a mode where you just want to hold for a longer time and you want to look at more of a one month basis or even a customized time frame, you could do that there. So the trend indicator we'll discuss next. If this one is used to set alerts. So step one, the key will pop up to indicate there's a great chance that an upward trend is coming. So stay alert and get ready. The bell indicator pops up and confirms the trend direction, and that's step two. This means the upward direction is strong and you may want to take action. Step three, the numbers one through seven confirm trend direction with these numerical numbers. Number one is the beginning of the first bar from which all buy conditions are met. The number two to seven is the total number count of the present cycle. If buy conditions criteria are still met, the number count will then restart from the bell. So here's an example of the trend indicator. You have the key comes in, it's a key opportunity, then the bell alert comes in, and that's when I typically will start buying a little percentage of my overall portfolio that I have or funds I have to invest, a percentage of that would be invested on this particular indicator. And then when I see a one, two, three, four, five, six, and a seven, that is reconfirming that the upward trend is still moving in that direction. Now, when you see the dollar sign instead of a five, that's just a reminder to you to say, hey, we, we've moved up five steps, this is a time where you probably should consider taking profit because what comes up goes down. It won't always stay up forever. And then you have six and then the dollar bag and that stands for seven. So you can also customize those pictures or their numbers, but that's there again to remind you take profit often. We're here to make money. All right. So then when the numbers stop coming in, that means that there's a resistance in the upward movement. And so therefore, it's a very um, volatile moment in time in your portfolio. So if you don't take profit now, then you better have some stamina to make sure that you can uh, fiscally manage life without taking profit. All right, so then you have indicators. Volatility index, it's my favorite. It shows overbought or oversold conditions and it's used with shorter time frames. We go back to the earlier slides. If you remember, we saw that today Ethereum was at a seven volatility and Bitcoin was at a six volatility. So it's super low, super low. They're oversold. And that is a key indicator that it's flooring. So then you have three, the signal line. It shows the trend direction confirmation when the green linear average crosses the red. Those are the green and the red lines. Pretty easy. Green means up. Red means it's going down. The TSI is the trend strength indicator. And all of these indicators have their own math that they're utilizing. So when you're looking at this, there's multiple mathematical calculations going into these determining factors that help you make the good sound decisions. So I just wanna let you know, they may look very similar, but there's different math going into each one of these, which makes them extremely powerful. So the trend strength indicator shows early trend reversal when the green plots start, and it shows early exit reversal when the red plots start. And the last one I call Houdini, it's ERI, that stands for early reversal indicator. This is where you have the green arrow pops up when the conditions for a soon upward trend are present. So I call it Houdini, it like happens before the market responds into that direction. The red arrow down means the conditions for a soon downward trend are present. So I think Joe, the creator of these indicators, went all out on these. They're super powerful and fun to watch. So here's an example. On the upper area, you have the early reversal. You see the red arrow comes in, and then what happens? The market goes down. 
Then you have the trend indicator. So, and this particular slide, it's, it's not of Bitcoin today, but it says the trend line goes from green to red and what happens, it goes down. And simultaneously, you have the trend strength indicator and it's following suit and it's saying, yes, red is here. And it's almost very in sync with the early reversal on what happens, the market goes down on this particular asset. And the signal line, same thing. And they're all, they all happen at different times, but within the same, um, within the same range almost. And the, uh, which is a sign that like, you know, even though we don't want it to go a certain direction, it is what it is. And at some point you, you definitely consciously accept that, you know, your asset didn't make as much as you wanted it to be, or, hey, you, you've made a lot of money, it's time to take profit, even though you would like it to continue to grow. And then you have that volatility index, and you can see on this particular example, again, that follows suit too. So unfortunately, you know, we don't have a control over the market. And, you know, when you see, when you see a duck, quacks like a duck, it's usually a duck. And, and I mean that wholeheartedly in a positive way. It's like, sometimes we have to take profit, even though when we want it to continue to grow, all right? All right, so now this is a little deeper explanation of volatility index, my favorite one. So the volatility indicator measures how far the coin stretches away from its mean price. When the volatility index has the line in the green zone, it's where I take profits. So take note to the numbers and descriptions on the right-hand side. It says overbought and that number 80 and then above 80, you see 100. That's the number zone of the overbought, which means that it's hitting most likely a ceiling the closer it gets to a 100. They, these indicators you can set alerts for. So these numbers I'm showing you are very significant. So if you bought down and I buy in the red zone, if it's possible, some coins that I want, don't ever get to the red zone. And that's when you have to make a decision, okay, hmm, I'm not buying it at rock bottom prices and you don't, you know, I don't have great expectations of that coin to grow too much in profit when I don't buy it in the red zone. So that's when these things that you could set alerts, tell me if you have an asset or a coin or a project you really wanna invest in, you could set an alert to tell you when it does get into the red zone and you don't, you know, this is, it can't be financial advice, but you can make a conscious choice to say you don't buy unless it's in the red zone or, you know, because you want to maximize your income producing activities. Um, all right, but the, I also want to take note that, um, so the red zone, the thick red line is a line number 20 and the thin red line on the bottom is a zero. So anything from zero to 20, I would say is very close to a floor. And then um, I like to buy as close to zero as possible. But let's also take note of the black line or the gray line in the middle. That's what we call the let the cake bake zone. It means that it's not at a ceiling, it's not at a floor. Uh, some could say it's sideways or it's still growing or moving. Sometimes like this example, you could see it goes up, but it doesn't hit the overbought zone. So, uh, you know, hopefully that it's grown from, if you bought it in the red, then if you see the direction of the upward movement changing, even though it didn't get all the way to the overbought, hopefully you have profit so you could uh, take profit um, before it goes back to the red zone. All right, again, if you still need these indicators, you can go to mastery.cryptobrigade.com and there'll be a link in the description below. So now is the fun time. So Joe is on the line with me and we can open this up to questions. So I hopefully you guys have some great questions for us today. Uh, I will be checking the questions box. And Joe, are you there with us today? How are you? Hi, Susie. How's it going? Great. Hi, everyone. Um, you know, uh, what I wanted to do was, Susie, kind of start off, uh, you know, so to kind of try to show everyone that even in a down market, um, because there's a lot of markets that we're setting the alerts with, but also how to get the most out of the tools and the technology. So um, what I wanted to do was, is see if you go to the uh, the screener, uh, the crypto screener inside the trading view. All right. 
And if you could remove uh, some of them columns so that we just have the technical rating and the exchange when we go to Coinbase. And this is really good for anyone that's new or starting off. Uh, this is a, a great way in here to uh, set alerts and also look for opportunity. So guys, what I did is I went into filters right here and then I went to exchange and picked, selected Coinbase and I took the flag color off. So it's any flags and you wanted the percentage change to be removed. Yeah, so when you go on here, one of the things in particular uh, that I'm looking for is the symbol ZRX BTC. And this week I'm kind of looking at the pairs because uh, money flow has to move somewhere. So generally we'll start to see clues within the pairs. So if you go to that uh, search, Susie, and you type that symbol in inside, there you go. The, what was the first? Was it B as in baby uh, or V? Oh, Z as, as in zebra, R as in Robert, X as in xylophone, BTC. All right, and uh, let's take a look at this on the chart. All right, so um, this was a great opportunity that took place last week, right? And uh, uh, everything happened in here textbook. Like we had the uh, volatility index at the 20. We got the uh, cross on the signal line. We got the uh, TSI. We got the ERI. And then we got the bell alert. So um, this is one market in particular, which is on the cross that I, I thought that was a great setup. I don't know if anyone may have caught caught this move, but that's why it's important to set the alerts because it, this is just such an abundance of information. It's way too much to keep in your head. Um, even me with all these years I've been doing it, um, I still set my alerts. Um, and that's part of being a good trader. So this is one in particular, Susie, that um, you know was was really easy because as soon as the momentum started to catch from the market, like as soon as the TSI kicked in, uh, you know, really the trade didn't take any heat; it just kept going one directional. Yeah, it looks like it's still going in that direction. To be honest with you, I mean, and look how yeah. low it was on the volatility index, and it's not even gotten to oversold yet. But on the TSI here in the oversold here, but this line doesn't look like it's going to be changing. I mean, this is a one day chart, you guys. Um, so earlier now, we were on one now, day. Susie, what, I, uh, what I want you to do in there is if you could add the radar. All right, and this so we can see in here what the uh, the different time frames are saying, and, and this is why the radar is important because, you know, right now this is um, a case point where we're seeing the market towards the the latter part of the trend, like the TSI is in the overbought zone, and the overbought is where the blue is. So, um, Susie, if you could put like an arrow right there, right at the overbought on the TSI. Okay, so once the market reaches into that area, um, the opportunity pretty much just took its course. So, you know, uh, getting into the trade is going to be a little bit more high riskier, but um, that's why it's important to take action in the beginning of the trend. And right here, that was just a, a great opportunity that took place last week that I, I wanted to um, point out. And um, another one, Susie, here which is again on the cross, uh, the pairs. Like if you go in here to the uh, MANA uh, Ethereum, M-A-N-A-E-T-H. And you see, th these are secrets. 
you know, of money flow, money flow in the market, you know, meaning is that uh, some people, they think the only way to make money is with the majors or uh, I have to do Bitcoin and or I have to do ApeCoin or Apollo. And that's not really how this business works. This is a business in here of a game of timing. And that's, that's what the value of these tools that you have in your possession, because now you can have the optimal timing of when to trade and gain the advantage over others, you know? So this right here is a, another great opportunity. It's not so much perfect textbook because we never got to be over oversold on the, the volatility index and it was kind of in between. And then we got a cross on the signal line and then the TSI just turned green. So, you know, and the scale from one to 10, the trade as it was developing may be uh, a five. But as, as soon as the, the ERI and the market goes with the trend, then that's when the market just explodes. So, you know, each trade, once you get into it, 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 it may not look like, oh, this is a 10, 10. But you have to let the cake bake because, you know, uh, this is mathematics. That's how the program works. And uh, once the market reaches that threshold, you get a retracement. And when that retracement happens, it, it makes it really uh, difficult to jump into the market once it gets fast. So this is. I wanted uh, to show everybody that it it went up fifty four percent in sixteen days, and you could take your ruler right here and you could track it for where the early reversal indicator came in and pull all the way to your current place. Sorry, go ahead, Joe. I just wanted to let them know that what that was, and it says sixteen days. It went up fifty four percent. Go ahead, Joe. I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Are you still there, Joe? Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, the main thing I just wanted to point out is the opportunities that present themselves with the pairs. So um, uh, you definitely want to um, explore um, all the markets and all the coins that they have on Coinbase, and with utilizing this crypto screener, if you can go like a half a page, Susie, like that, or no, like well, that? no, so that you can see the um, so, so you can see the screener. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, if you look in here when you're utilizing the screener, um, this right here can give you potential opportunities like you know where it says the technical rating and then um it's really easy because you can uh once you choose that that pair then you can see what the tools are favoring and then you know like if maybe if you have opportunity and alignment now this right here is like a, a stable so yeah. you know you want to um like if you go to half screen like, okay, so you can like, uh, this there's another pair on here, which is uh, OGN. OGN. Yeah, BTC. So this was another opportunity um, that presented itself, and this is another perfect textbook setup. And when I say textbook, it's because uh, if you take a look at this, um, and if, if you minimize the screener, you can see in there that we had the volatility index at the 20, then you had the signal line, crossing the signal line, followed with the TSI, then the ERI. And this is what winning trades look like right here. Yeah, and look, it would 50. 56% in two weeks. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to see if we have any questions. Let's see. No questions so far. All right. Now, um, 
one of the um, other pairs, right? This one here is on the Gemini. Um, if you go to this one, Susie, LT, LTC. ET, ETH. There you go. Right? So here's an example in here where as we had a movement to the upside, and then just the other day, yesterday, we got that ERI. So if you're along this and or you're along a position with the tools and you're in a profit, and if that ERI triggers, uh, which is like, a re it shows reversals um, off of potential highs or lows. Then that's definitely um, a great place to take a profit. Yeah, so it's around 48% in 10 days. Yeah. yeah. And you see when, when that TSI starts to turn red, Susie, right there, right. you know, take profit. Take profit. Yeah, you know, it's interesting how the trend is still going green too. So it's it's still high, right? So someone that just didn't have time to check the market out and hasn't taken profit, hopefully if they got it two weeks ago. They're still in profits, something to take. But the last one to come in is going to be this trend indicator. Yes, that's correct. And now usually when the market is strong, Okay, then the whole radar would be green. So that's another clue. You know, always pay attention to the radar. Um, the radar, depending on what time frame that you're using, it may uh, may or not uh, affect the, uh, the, you know, it may, it may be delayed a little bit. I mean, because obviously if you're on a 60 minute, the 60 minute is going to calculate on the close of the 60 minute bar. So when we're looking at an intraday, it's giving us an update. But you actually don't have a um, a final direction to the close of the bar. So what happens is is that when the market is is at its strongest, we'll see the radar go all green, right? But you know, right now uh, we had our ERI that come in. Now we had the TSI starting to show the red. But we got a cross in the signal line. So right now this is weak. Like the play is over. I mean, one thing you don't want to do, Susie, you don't want to buy it here. <laughs> so if you didn't catch the uptrend, right, and you're kind of like looking at your chops and you're like, should I get in now? No, you missed it. You know, it's called trading. You know, it, it's, it's buy low, sell high, not buy high and lose. So, you know, right. we want to use the setups, you know, and play the game with the tools. And then that's how you can have fun in investing and and also fun sharing and learning on uh how to you know maximize the opportunities with technology it, there's no difference in what we're doing here than you you setting the gps on your phone so that you can make it to the restaurant for a saturday for dinner you know it, it's real intimidating you know it's an hour drive you don't know where you're going your best friend invited you but you got the GPS, you got that piece of technology that says, hey, there's no traffic, you can still be there in 15 minutes. But knowing well, that. That being said, do you want to, it um, I, looks like we had found this last week because I had an arrow here from before. Do you want to find something today that looks like it's a ripe and ready, a ready Freddy to jump in? <laughs> ready Freddy. I know, put the pressure on. <laughs> What's in, in Joe's secret buy land? Um, I'd like to do to look at what is super down. So the percentage change opposite commute to see what's super low. I, well, I mean, look, I can tell you this, right? I'm not, you know, I'm jumping all across the exchanges and and uh, on the um um. See, on the, the Coinbase, crypto. right, oh, okay. on, on the Coinbase exchange, right, the Coinbase has more cross pairs that are profitable, okay, which means is, is that, you know, you're only going to be able to do with this technology what you're, what's offered with your broker, 
So that means different brokers carry different pairs. So if you're at Coinbase, right, um, you're limited to the pairs that you have when you're doing the, the crosses. But if we were to look at something eminent, because I know that we have uh, customers that are uh, utilizing multiple exchanges, one of the exchanges I would say, Susie, um, which is a good one, which is KeyCoin. So let's go in there and replace um, the Coinbase with KeyCoin, just so we can try to find something that's eminent moving so we can show winning some th some type of winning setup because sure. uh, do you want to do both or just q coin well, let's just do one Keycoin. okay so we'll go to q coin all right so our exchange only is the only exchange we're looking at is q coin okay so now right um i'm going through in here on the daily And really, when you're going when you're going through here, Susie, right? Take a look. You always take a look at what the daily and what the weekly are doing on the time frames. All right. All right. Because the thing is, is that you know the radar is another way where it helps you organize your watch list. In fact, let me. If you don't mind doing this, right? This is. I just wanted to do something else for anybody new that's following along, right? If you can go up to the the watch list. Right, and let's say we create a new watch list. You know, yeah. my my first watch list. <laughs> All right, so we go one second, guys. So we're gonna go. God, it's been a long time since I created a new one. Hold on, there we go. Create a new list. All right, my new watch list, and then we click save. All right. All right, and then now. Um, if you go hit the plus sign, right? Okay, and if you go where it says all sources on the right, no, on the right. Oh, okay, we'll go back to crypto, all sources, okay. Okay, and let's go to the exchange uh, key coin. There you go. Okay, and then on the, if you don't mind, just hit the plus and add all the markets. So anyone that's new that's starting off um, it doesn't have to be KeyCoin. It could be Coinbase. It could be Gemini. It could be Binance. It doesn't matter which brokerage you're in. You want to create your watch list. And this is an easy way that I'm going to show you that within a few minutes, we're going to organize this watch list, find out the best opportunity in this brokerage. You're going to love it. This is a great class, Joe. There's a lot of key coins on here. <laughs> We're going to see what we find. In this I think field. it's a good lesson on not being attached. Okay. Now, um, what I want you to do, Susie, is, is if you can hide um, all the chart overlays except the radar. Sure. How about I just pick the radar? Watch this. We'll just say radar. There we go. Is that okay on the time frame wise? Uh, well, I wouldn't. Um, let's use the default that that uh, that everyone starts with. So, this one. Um, this should be it, I believe. Is that the, the default is sixty? So if you go to click settings. Oh. Okay. I just wanted to be exact for anyone that's starting off. And let's go 60 minute, 240 daily, uh, a one day, and then the week. Wait, 240. And you know, this is something here that you can modify to what what's best of, of what you may like. This is what um, how we start off. Right. So, do you want to find one that has the one D and the one, um, the one day and the one week in line? Yeah, that's what we're going to try to look for. And then, if if you can find one, you know, if if you have the the uh, the daily, so you want to color code. So, so Susie, wait, 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 wait. 
let's start back here in the beginning, right? And if the daily, right, is is green, color coded green, because it may not be perfect. Okay, if if you have, and let's um, create another sub a subsection, right, so that we can put um, as a title, green daily radar, and then we can create another sub section which it says waiting for and then that way there we can organize this watch list in a few minutes and then we can see if there's any opportunity on this on the daily green daily green daily that's what you want right green daily yes yes and the other one as a subsection what was the title you want to call this one again um waiting for so if you're if you're waiting for it, it's it, you know it's red, but it, it, if it's green, it goes into the other column. So what I'm looking at, guys, here's the one D for the daily, and if it's red, I'm going to color code it red. So this one yep. is green. So and, and, and one more second, Tootie. Right, I just wanted to show you something. Um, if you go to the radar, right, and you click the settings, all right, and um, I just wanted to uh, see something. This is that uh, okay? Um, yeah, everything is correct there. Click OK. At least a little different than mine. Okay, that's it. Um, okay, you go. I'm So, like, as you go through this, Susie, you're finding out the best opportunities that may be at this potential broker eminently. Yeah, it's great, guys. You're just cleansing. You're, you're, you're determining what to focus on and what not to focus on. And this is utilizing technology in your favor. I mean, like, um, you know, or you can do things the old-fashioned way by hand and it takes you hours to do, you know, um, or you can do things the easy way and then take someone else's advice. But you can be really courageous and you can take your future in your own hands and you can gain an education. And then now you can be setting uh, different alerts and learning. And then now you're in control. You're driving. And sometimes, you know, that's the only way to really grow is to take control. This is great. It's just basically saying that, you know, things are still moving downward, but it, it's all going to flip eventually when it does. It's just very apparent. Like, it seems like everything's going to flip at once. But part of being a good trader is matching the expectation with the trade, with the setup. And here's an example in here where is that there's numerous markets in here that aren't ready. And if it's not ready, walk away. Set the alert. You know, you have to be a good trader. And part of being a good trader is how to position yourself, how to utilize the tools, having the best tools. Now, Susie, just imagine someone else that doesn't have the technology that you have and then now they can get caught in all the FOMO, and then now here you are, Susie, clearing through the FOMO. Yeah, it's it's like confusion leaves the mind paralyzed. I think it's what I've heard somebody very smart say before. So it clears the confusion. Well, that's beautiful. So I'm just, you know, that is not at a place. It seems like everything's going down on. Um, but yeah. Luna, so, Luna is one of those things I don't know about. You know what I mean? Ah. Now, now, Susie, now that you found the best two opportunities in this list of maybe 100 coins that you did, now let's turn the other overlays on. Right? So we can maximize that education, maximize that power. Right? And... Um, well, I mean, this right here, we don't have a, enough data right now. Like, if you, if you make the chart a little bit more tighter, sometimes this is going to happen. You, you might 
find a market that doesn't have the data. If that's the case, you can go um, a little bit lower, Susie. Like that's the that's the daily. Maybe go to the four hour, right? So it's yeah. a it's a little bit tricky when once you have um once if you don't have enough data, it's a little bit tricky, you know. So that one it doesn't have all the data that I'd, I'd like to see there, but nonetheless, um, it's trending up, right? Well, so there's two, there's Luna and there's LUNC. So this is the classic. And what happened is the people, including myself, that had Luna during that downtrend, that that moment of aha, uh, anything that you had in your account, they photographed the accounts, I guess. They screenshotted them and they gave you this LUNC. So I actually am a holder of this one. Um, so it's great that I'm actually seeing this chart and uh, I kind of just kind of gave up on Luna a while ago and I wasn't really following it. So it's very interesting to know that it went up 58% in 12, in two days, in two days. So very wow. interesting. Yeah, well, that's because it had a long, long fall down, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's got a long way to go to get back to where it was. but. Uh, Good to see something, right? Anybody that's new in this um, definitely got some profit fast, which is exciting for them, right? Hey guys, hey Susie, uh, it's uh, Brett. I did think, did uh, want to just chime in, say hello. Great class as usual, and uh, always picking up new gems for everything that you guys are dropping. And Joe, um, always good insights um, for everyone here. I hope you guys appreciate the energy and time that it takes to put these classes on because I can tell you these are some of the best tools I've seen and used in 20 years of trading, 20 plus years. And there I always pick up something new from Joe. And behind the scenes, I can tell you he's hard at work, uh, working on new things and making them consistently better. So, you know, if you are here, then uh, you're in the right place. And uh, we are going to be seeing a lot more people in these classes soon, I'm sure of it, because um, this market, while it's volatile, there's always opportunity. And we've been nailing these market swings with these indicators. And when, when these all line up, it's it's almost magic. It's, uh, you know, we tend not to say that in trading because it's serious business, but uh, we've kind of put together the closest thing to a crystal ball that there is when the ERI and the trend strength indicator line up and the signal line and the trend indicator, the four horsemen, and then that vol index is, uh, is amazing. So, you know, uh, and we're playing around, we're tinkering. Joe's like a mad scientist slash genius. Uh, and so we're working on some other things that would pr frankly blow your mind that uh, we'll be kind of coming out with sooner than later. So I know we're almost out of time, everyone. Just wanted to say hello and welcome. And and again, if you are watching the replay or are on the YouTube channel and like what you see, these indicators can be found at uh, mastery.cryptobrigade.com. And uh, for those of you that are here and uh, still using them, there's, there's so many nuances. Just make sure you're here every week because I've been – on these classes for a year now, and I'm always learning new nuances uh, from from Joe, the uh, creator. So anyway, great class, guys. I'll sign off and say goodbye, but um, uh, good job, and uh, it's looking uh, looking good. Found some interesting coins here, so I'll have to take an eye, uh, keep an eye on those, and set some alerts and see what happens. Thanks so much, Brett. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. Cool. Hey, bye, everyone. That's super. And um, just one thing, we had Gilio in the notes stated that he wanted to know what's going on with USDT. So I thought maybe we can hold that for next week since we're out of time, if that's okay with you guys. I'll, I'll chime in on that briefly. Uh, there are some coordinated attacks uh, attempting on USDT, and they claim they're 100% backed. So it remains to be seen. The one thing that could take these markets dramatically lower right now, on which is obviously – uh, not ideal, but it is it is the hallmark of a bottom. And I don't think we're at a bottom just yet, but if USDT were to implode or Coinbase were to implode or MicroStrategy, any of those three things, um, I, I think they're all remote ch chances, all claim to be uh, fine, but, um, you know, so Alex Mashinsky of Celsius was uh, saying they were fine days just going into their, their receivership. So, um, 
dangerous times, guys. We are sort of, this is, we thought internet bubble was last time, but uh, this is sort of the overlap of the famed internet bubble. But out of it rose, like the phoenix, rose out of the ashes, the household names that we know today, the multi-billion dollar companies. So, you know, we wait and watch and we're patient and we rely on the technology. You know, there was people in buying, I knew people buying in Bitcoin around 20,000 and I was, you know, our active trader class, I've been telling people we're not there yet. Why, how do we know that? ERI hasn't printed at all both on the daily or weekly, the signal line hasn't, uh, the TSI hasn't, so we rely on our indicators and, um, you know, we're sort of waiting to see that capitulation. So USDT, I assume that's kind of what your angle is. We'll cover that tomorrow on Active Trader, Julio, and, um, but uh, we'll see how the news play, that plays out. They claim they're backed, uh, but what's, what's, they're 100% backed, but what is concerning is, News came out today that multiple hedge funds have been trying to do a coordinated attack on uh, Tether. So, you know, these hedge funds are relentless and kind of soulless and uh, only concerned about uh, making money. And, um, you know, that's what they do. There's an article here, and I'm just pulling it up because somebody sent this to me earlier today. Uh, we can post a link. Here it's on uh, Watcher Guru. It says traditional hedge funds are trying to short USDT, says the Tether CTO. So uh, we'll have to kind of see what happens if. So if you have a lot on Tether, um, you know I can't give financial advice, but uh, we are recommending that to go in to cold storage if you have that option. Anything you're holding on to and is possibly at risk, then uh, it's always a good idea to have that in cold storage. But um, Anyway, do uh, do your own research and um, and be safe out there because at some point we will bottom and you'll want to have some dry powder to start uh, legging into some of these projects that uh, are looking the strongest. So anyway, guys, just thought I'd add to that. And um, so if you want to sign us off, Susie, and uh, again, great class and uh, look forward to next week. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next week.